Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation for integer solutions. We have x squared minus y factorial equals 2001 and x and y are integers. Obviously since we're talking about y factorial, y cannot be a negative integer. Now this problem probably appeared in a math contest in the year 2001, I can't remember exactly where, but you might have seen this before. Anyways, if you do know where this problem appeared, uh, please let us know in the comment section. So, how do you solve these kinds of problems? First of all, this is a non-standard equation because we have x squared, which is a quadratic function or a polynomial, and y factorial is a whole different story, kind of like a discrete function, right? So, we're not going to consider the continuous case with the gamma function, obviously. In this case, we're only going to be looking for integers. How do you solve these kinds of problems? Well, one of the best tools for solving these equations, which are called Diophantine equations. By the way, I made a video, you can go ahead and check that out, a lecture video on Diophantine equations. But the main, one of the main strategies is using modular arithmetic. Meaning that in a particular mod, like mod five or mod three, if this equation has no solutions, then in general, it does not have any solutions either. So we can try to reduce it by using any mod. But of course, most of the time, you do not know which mod is gonna help, so you can kind of start with mod three, mod five. I think there was a USAMO problem many years ago, which was a system of equations, and I think it was solvable using mod 11 or mod 13, something like that. Imagine trying it, but you have an hour and a half for each problem, so it wouldn't be a big deal. Anyways, so what are we gonna do? First of all, one thing to notice is that for certain values of y, y factorial is going to be real big. For example, 5 factorial is 120, 4 factorial is 24, I don't know why it went backwards, 3 factorial is 6, but then let's go forward, 6 factorial is 720, and I think 7 factorial is 5040. Now, starting with the 5 factorial, all the factorials end in 0. Therefore, they are divisible by 10. So, mod 10 might be a little helpful here, maybe, who knows. you got to give it a try. But I'll be presenting a single method, and you can definitely try different mods. Okay? And the mod that I'm going to use is going to be mod 9. Okay, so, and obviously... Before I start solving the problem, I just want to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. Great, right? Well, Wolfram Alpha thinks that it can solve for x or just solve this equation like this, but that's not the solution we're looking for, obviously. So Wolfram Alpha could not find integer solutions, even though I prompted integer solutions. Anyways, so here is what we're going to do. First of all, if y is greater than 5, think about it, like 6 factorial, 7 factorial, and all the other factors. Obviously, if 6 factorial is divisible by any number, all the other factorials are also going to be divisible by that number because they all contain 6 factorial. Make sense? 6 factorial is the smallest one that that'll satisfy. So, if y is greater than 5, at least 6, then y factorial is always going to be divisible by 9. You'll see why this is important in a little bit. And how is that going to help us? Well, here's the thing. It's good to be able to get 0 because then you can reduce the equation to a single variable. So we had x squared minus y factorial equals 2001. If you look at this through the mod 10 lens, then you're going to get x squared minus 0 is congruent to 2001 mod 9, right? And then 2001 is going to be what? Let's go ahead and find out. How do you find the remainder what 2001 is going to be? You add the digits. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 2001 is 3 mod 9. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means we have to find a number, x, whose square equals 3 mod 9. Make sense? Cool. So here's what we're going to do then. Check all the squares, mod 9. For example, uh, we can kind of talk about, and since we're squaring, if x is congruent to 0, 1, 2, 3, 
and 4. At 5, we can use a negative 4 whose square is going to be the same. So we only need to test these values. Let's go ahead and evaluate x squared in each case, mod 9. Makes sense? 0 is going to be 0, 1 is going to be 1, 2 is going to be 4, 3 is going to be 9, which is the same as 2, 4 is going to be 16, which is the same as 7. So these are possibilities that you can get uh, from squares mod 9. Make sense? Okay. What does that mean? It means that you are not going to be able to get a 3. You see that? x squared will never be 3 mod 9 if x is an integer. Therefore, this equation has no solutions. But we said we are checking for y greater than 5, which means y should not be greater than 5. Therefore, y needs to be less than or equal to 5. You see, we can kind of find a boundary. So in some cases, modular arithmetic is going to help you uh, to prove there are no solutions because if there's no solutions in a mod, then in general there are no solutions, or it'll give you some solutions. In this case, it tells us, hey, y needs to be less than or equal to 5. And then we're just going to test it, right? If, and let me copy my equation one more time. And if, for example, if y is equal to 5, you're going to get x squared minus, and by the way, I can kind of I put two y factorial on the right hand side and just add the 2000 to one. Okay, I'm sorry, that's not a factorial, right? Obviously, that's too large. So if y is 5, this is going to be x squared equals 2001 plus 125, right? And that is going to be 2226. Well, too bad. Actually, I think that's 2,100, so not good at arithmetic here. But obviously, this is not a perfect square. So y equals 5 does not work. Let's test y equals 4. If y is equal to 4, then we're going to get x squared equals 4 factorial, which is 24 plus 2,001. That's equal to 2,025, and that happens to be 45 squared. Therefore, from here we get two solutions. x equals 45 and x equals negative 45. We're looking for integers, not just positive integers, and there are two solutions, there are two numbers whose square equals 2025. How did I know quickly that 2025 is 45 squared? Because there's a shortcut, let me tell you real quick. If you have a two or more digit number, take the tens digit in this case, and that's a four. And what is one more than four? That's a five, four times five is 20. Just attach a 25 and you'll get the square, you see? That applies to all the numbers pretty much. You can check that ends in 5. Now, do the other ones give us a solution? You can go ahead and test it out. But guess what? They're not going to give you any solution. So x equals 45, x equals negative 45 are going to be the only solution with 4. So we can kind of write it as 45, comma 4 and negative 45, comma 4 as our solution ordered pairs. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.